Article 31, Statistics and Data Collection. This article begins with four comments highlighted in panels. Data is like a road map and gives directions to the government so they know where to put resources. If you don't have a road map, you will go nowhere. Hui Participant I suspect the data that is collected is very much skewed towards those disabled people that are sufficiently articulate, organized, and switched on to respond to surveys and consultation exercises. I suspect there are many disabled people who are missed by such exercises. Survey Respondent Data doesn't reflect us. Hui Participant it, the census, doesn't capture the nuance of disabled people's experiences. The Washington questions capture data about function, not impairment, and do not capture data on neurodiversity. Data collection needs to reflect the breadth of experiences in the disability communities. Survey Respondent Introduction Article 31 requires the government to collect appropriate data and statistical information to give effect to the Disability Convention. Such data needs to be disaggregated to assist the government in determining how it is fulfilling the Disability Convention obligations and to identify and address barriers faced by disabled people in exercising their rights. Importance of Article 31 to Disabled People in New Zealand this article is fundamentally important for implementing the Disability Convention. Without adequate information, statistics and data, it is impossible to properly plan and deliver services and provisions for disabled people or to fully track progress in New Zealand on making disability rights real. Current place of Article 31 in Law and Practice there is a paucity of disaggregated disability information in New Zealand. As a consequence of the New Zealand Disability Strategy 2016 to 2026, the government has agreed on an outcomes framework to measure progress in implementing the strategy. The framework has 29 outcomes, many of which do not currently have data sets. However, work is progressing to address this over time. General surveys, such as the Household Survey, are starting to collect disaggregated disability information. Committee's previous dialogue with the State on Article 31. In its 2014 concluding observations, the Disability Committee raised concerns over the lack of disaggregated disability information and data. It asked questions on disability data again in its list of issues in 2018. Comment on the realization of Article 31 in New Zealand. Both the Household Labour Force Survey and the Household Economic Survey now collect some disaggregated disability data. However, the census and the disability surveys that have followed the last few censuses are still key in providing information about disabled people in New Zealand. This will remain the case until other data collection sources gather enough disability data. In 2018, for the first time, the census was available only online, which posed challenges for some disabled people. Communication about support available to complete the census was not very clear or timely. The printed verification code sent by mail was not accessible to blind and visually impaired people. There was no disability survey following the 2018 census, so it was not possible to ascertain whether or not lower than normal census completion rates will have an impact on disability data and, consequently, on service planning. Recommendations The IMM recommends that the government... 112, from 2023, restart the disability survey following each census, commencing with the 2023 census. 113, continue to introduce disability data collection in all general household surveys conducted by Statistics New Zealand. 114. Continue to promote the benefits and advise on the limitations of the Washington Group short set of questions on disability in order to encourage the creation of a consistent cross-agency data set. 115. Continue work with disabled people and representative organizations to ensure that census completion is barrier-free for disabled people so they can engage as they choose with independence, confidence and dignity.